What do you know? We're live. Welcome. I didn't announce this lesson. It's a live lesson. I don't think anybody will be here uh, as we do this, but that's great. I hope you're watching on replay. And if you haven't subscribed and you ring that little bell, you know, you'll get a notification when I go live, most likely. But today we're going to talk about Harriet Tubman, famous American, uh, former slave, worked on this thing called the Underground Railroad. We will talk about that. So if you are trying to improve your English, I think this lesson will be perfect. If you like American history, bonus. If you're studying for the U.S. citizenship test, bonus, because they also love to ask questions on there about history. Slavery is one topic I know that is sometimes asked on the U.S. citizenship test. And I did not really prepare this lesson. I am going to be reading from a Wikipedia page. Now, this Wikipedia page is written in simple English, so it should be a little bit easier than the regular Wikipedia page, but there's no copyright on it, so I can actually read it, use that to teach you, uh, but not get in trouble for copyright laws. So a bonus for me and hopefully a bonus for you too, because you'll be learning a lot of awesome stuff. And Cecilia is here. Hey, I didn't think anybody would be here uh, live. I thought most people would watch on the replay. So what we're doing here is learning a little bit about Harriet Tubman. And as you can see on the thumbnail, she lived a long, long time ago. And I'm just going to be reading from the Wikipedia page here and then adding some details that I just know from being um, a student of American history and uh, an American history teacher as well as an English teacher here in the United States. Well, I think first things first, I need to get on my glasses here just so I can read everything uh, correctly. And at, at some point, I'll probably have myself disappear, like maybe now, so that you can see the print a little bit better. And then you'll see my cursor right here. And um, I'll just read where my cursor's at. So Harriet Tubman. And you can see that her name is Harriet Tubman, but she was born a different name, Araminta Ross, in 1820 or 1821. So one thing that's in, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, one, one, thank you, Cecilia. She said that uh, I'm her favorite reader. That's good. I'm going to keep trying to try to keep doing that. So one thing that um, we should know about slaves, because Harriet Tubman was born into slavery and nobody knew that she was going to be this famous American. So her birth was not noted in any way. Slaves were treated just like animals. Uh, a slave owner would most likely look at a slave as just another part of the farm. Um, the same as if a cow was born. Hey, this cow is going to give me milk. Great. Wow. The slave is going to work on my plantation. So that's why right off the bat, right at the beginning, we don't know her exact year of birth. It might be 1820. It might be 1821. Um, I don't, I think most people would probably know that the life of a slave was extremely hard it's an extremely embarrassing part of U.S. history, but it is what it is, and we should not forget it. So this is Harriet Tubman, was an African-American anti-slavery worker and humanitarian. So when you see that word humanitarian, and I think we could prop the great thing about Wikipedia is we can click on this. And then we can get some more information. But if you notice humanitarianism, big word, right? Uh, but it does have human in it. So if you ever see humanitarianism or a humanitarian, that is someone who deeply cares about humans. She was also a union spy and the first black woman to ever lead an American mission during the American Civil War. 
So if we want to talk about right here, union spy, you, when you see union here and you're talking about the United States, automatically think of American civil war here in the United States, we just call it the civil war. So the union was the North. And then if you ever hear Confederate, that's the South. So she was a union spy and we'll see that she will eventually work for the union, the Northern troops, which was very dangerous because if you were African-American and you were fighting on the side of the union and you were captured by the Confederates, it was well known that you would not be treated very fairly at all. And in fact, you might be sold back into slavery if you were fighting on the side of the Union against the Confederacy in the Civil War. She was born into slavery, but she escaped. During her life, she made 19 trips. She helped more than 300 slaves escape. She used the Underground Railroad. So right here, we should probably talk about Underground Railroad. And that what it's not a railroad and it's not underground. So if you go to New York City, there are subway trains, right? They're, they're underground. Most major cities have them. Underground here means secret. Railroad, it was just a path of roads and trails for slaves living in the southern United States a way to get them ultimately to Canada. So that was what the Underground Railroad was, helping slaves escape to freedom. And that freedom was probably found in Canada. That was the ultimate last stop. We'll see that Harriet Tubman will not go to Canada, but she does go to Philadelphia. Rudy, Dominican Republic. How are you? Hey, um, don't feel so badly, Rudy. Um, you know, I've been a reading teacher for 20 years, so it's kind of my job. You know, I've been reading for tens of thousands of hours, so it's kind of my job. But Rudy, welcome. Yeah, so we're learning a little bit about uh, Harriet Tubman and American history along the way, I hope. When Harriet Tubman was a child in Dorchester, Dorchester County, Maryland, she was whipped and beaten by many different masters. When she was very young, an angry overseer. So if overseer is new for you, think of it as like the boss on a slave plantation. Another name for a boss. Threw a heavy metal weight at another slave. The weight accidentally hit Tubman's head. That caused seizures, headaches, powerful visionary and dream experience, <coughs> excuse me, experiences. She had those problems all her life. Tubman believed the visions and vivid dreams came from God. We should talk about seizures here. That might be a new word for people. And that is when the brain, um, man, spasms, um, it shakes. And sometimes these seizures will happen only in the brain. Sometimes they'll happen only in the brain, but then the whole body might also shake. So because she was hit with a heavy object in the head, we'll, we'll learn more about this later on. Um, she experienced problems for the rest of her life. And unfortunately she sometimes had seizures and there were definite, you know, her brain went through a change and she says that she received visions, pictures from God. So we'll get this back on here. And I believe we were right about here in 1849 Tubman escaped to Philadelphia. Slaves were free there. She returned to Maryland to rescue her family. She eventually guided dozens of other slaves to freedom. Slave owners offered large rewards for the return of their slaves. Tubman was never caught because nobody knew she was freeing slaves. 
All right. So that, um, you know, the great thing about Wikipedia here is that it's free and anybody can add to it. But that statement is definitely a an opinion. The, the reason she was never caught is because nobody knew she was freeing slaves. Um, some might say she was never caught because she was so good at what she did. But it's Wikipedia. It's free. It's probably true, you know, a lot of what is written here. But I love Wikipedia. I use that quite a bit when I want some quick information. And like I said, this is called... Um, right up here, it's simple.wikipedia.org. So this is written, I'm not even sharing the screen. It's, uh, and you don't see it right there, but it is simple English. So I, I think this is still, you know, pretty difficult if you're learning English, but that's why I'm here, you know, to read it for you. And then you can always look this page up later if you want and try to read more just like Rudy said he would do. He's going to read a little more. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing about um, anything, really. The more you do it, the better you'll become. It just, it might take a long time, but the more you do it, the better you'll become. Right here, a little bit further down. Let's make sure I'm sharing it. I am. Let's just go big here. You don't need to see my face. When the American Civil War began, Tubman worked for the Union Army. She worked first as a cook and nurse. Later, she was an armed scout and spy. I do want to talk about that for a second. Armed scout. When you see armed, that means she had a weapon. And that is not very common for someone who was African-American back in the 1800s. In fact, in many parts of the country, that was illegal. Um, slaves were not, it was illegal to teach slaves how to read. It was illegal to educate slaves. And it was mostly illegal for slaves to carry firearms. So the fact that she was... Um, you know, just trusted so much. You know, the Union Army was a little different, but she was a woman. She was fighting in the 1800s, armed scout. So a scout is not a soldier, but in some cases it's more dangerous than a soldier because she often probably worked alone as a, a spy. So she would go very close to what's called enemy lines, right where the enemy is, enemy lines, and spy on them. So she did have a weapon, but you can imagine if she's spying on an army, she's probably by herself or with one other person spying on an army, like a bunch of people. So right then and there, we know that she is a very brave person, very brave person and, and trusted. Scouts had to be very good at what they did. And of course, working on the Underground Railroad, she had to do this in secret all the time. Yeah, I agree, Cecilia. I mean, so brave, which is why I hope soon there's talk of putting Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill, which I think would be amazing. Right now on our money in the United States, most of our money, and I'm, I'm actually doing a, um, a lesson on my other channel tomorrow about money. Most of our bills are paper money. In fact, all of them, white dudes, white dudes, white guys. And our country, of course, we have a whole mix of different races and different genders. And our, I think our money should, you know, represent the people. Harriet Tubman, I think, would be a great choice for the $20 bill. It would bump a president off, our seventh president, yeah, seventh president, Andrew Jackson, but we got enough presidents on there, right? I mean, she she should definitely be on the, my opinion, but I think she should be on the 20. She guided the Comahe River raid. I've never heard of that river, but the great thing about if you've never heard of this, oftentimes, if you just keep reading, 
They're called context clues. There will be some clues that will tell you what this is. What is the Comahe River Raid? Well, it freed more than 700 slaves in South Carolina. After the war, she moved to her family in Auburn, New York. There she cared for her aging parents. She became active in the women's suffrage movement in New York until she became ill. Anytime you see that right there, women's suffrage, women's suffrage. Nope. Jow, jow question. I'm, I'll get to that right now. Um, anytime you see that women's suffrage, think about women's right to vote, women's right to vote. So Harriet Tubman worked on freeing slaves. And once there was no more slavery in the United States, she was like, hmm, who else can we help? Women. Women can't vote. So, I mean, awesome stuff. Um, oh, the doctor's one? Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. So, I just, re- okay, let's talk about this for a second. Um, this lesson is about Harriet Tubman, but hey, I'm, I'm right here and you just watched the video. Let's let's talk about it. Um, Jow, build through. Okay. So, in that video... When I went to the doctors, I didn't have to pay my copay right there. That they're gonna get my money. Don't worry. But it was billed through like my insurance. I think she said DHS. I couldn't quite understand her watching it back. But what it meant was I was not paying the money today, but they will send me a bill. So it'll be it'll be billed through. So I think I have to pay fifteen dollars. And I'll just get a bill in the mail and I'll pay it that way. So I would, I, I'm going to use a difficult tense here. I would have rather paid that money right at the doctor's office. And maybe if I wasn't filming, I would have insisted like, no, can I, can I pay right now? I'm not sure if they would have let me, but I hope that helps Joe. If, if not, um, and I think as Luciano said, um, I should make a video just on like medical insurance and what happens when people can't pay. Um, I'm going to talk about it tom- in tomorrow's video lesson on money, but a lot of times just families go bankrupt because they can't pay medical bills here in the United States. Yeah. It's super sad. Uh, I'm so thankful that I do have insurance. And like I said, in that video, um, most people will get insurance through their employer. So because I work for a school department, they pay for my insurance, the most, most of it. Like I would say the bulk, they would pay for the most of it, but I still think I pay a couple hundred dollars a month for myself and my children. So Jamie also has insurance through her school, but it's cheaper for her to have her own insurance. And then I have my insurance and our children. So it's pretty complicated. Not, not, it's very complicated. Luckily, Harriet Tubman is not quite as, uh, as difficult here. Yeah. You're welcome. Jow. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Harriet Tubman. See couple more minutes here. Um, Yeah. So she cared for her aging parents. We read that. So it seems like her parents were ill. Probably they were also former slaves. We learned that she helped many members of her family escape slavery. And she became active in the women's suffrage movement in New York until she became ill. Near the end of her life, she lived in a home for elderly African-Americans. Years later, she had helped create that home. I'm sorry, years earlier, she had helped create that home. Harriet was a leader and still is. Yeah, I want to read this part right here, which is the head injury, because I found this uh, extremely disturbing, of course. And it also gives a good idea of just how awful slavery was just, you know, one of the worst things you can imagine Uh, one person being owned by another person and 
really not caring about their well-being at all, at all. Um, maybe I'll do a whole lesson on slavery, but I do want to read this last part here just to give you an idea of what slavery was like here in the United States. So I'm going to read right here with head injury, head injury, try to get this as big as possible without cutting anything off. Probably good as it gets right here. Head injury. One day, the adolescent Tubman, and when we say adolescent, we mean like teenager, adolescent. She was probably 12, 13, 14 years old. Adolescent. Tubman was sent to a dry goods store for supplies. There she met a slave owned by another family. That slave had left the fields without permission. His overseer, there's that word again, boss, was angry. He demanded that Tubman help restrain the young man. So if you restrain somebody, it's like you physically stop them. So Tubman, she's she's a young girl. She's probably very scared, like, what's going on here? These two people are fighting. The overseer, maybe a white person, but maybe not. Some overseers were were black. They were slaves themselves. Sometimes, sometimes. But either way, Anya's here. Very late in Germany, I think. But how are you, Anya? We're just learning a little bit about Harriet Tubman right now, hoping that it will help people with their English, also American history, and maybe if you are uh, studying for the U.S. citizenship test, this might help. There are often questions about American history on the U.S. citizenship test. So, so let's get back into this uh, this head injury thing. Just awful. Where were we? Okay. He demanded that Tubman help restrain the young man. Tubman refused. She's like, I'm not going to help you. I mean, this is a slave talking back to a an overseer. You got to love that. As the slave ran away, the overseer threw a two-pound weight at him. The weight hit Tubman instead. Tubman said the weight broke my skull. She later explained her belief that her hair, which had never been combed and stood out like a bushel basket, Bushel is a way to um, weigh vegetables, like one bushel, one bushel, might have saved her life. This is where it gets really awful here. Bleeding and unconscious. So if you don't know that word unconscious, that means she was alive, but she was not awake. So she was unconscious. She did not have consciousness. Hopefully all of us right now, hopefully we're all conscious if if we're conscious that means we're awake and alert and but if you're unconscious you're not dead you're still breathing but it might look like you're dead unconscious how are you turkey i believe you're from turkey right speak it speak it i think you're from turkey and i think it's pretty late there hi carl how are you welcome just learning a little bit about harriet tubman today almost almost finished with the lesson. I don't want to go too long because I know if you're watching this live or you're watching this on replay, there are a lot of words in English, like unconscious, that might be new. So we'll try to keep it short. Ah, turkey, it's very late, isn't it? Very late. Maybe a night owl? A night owl? Oh, welcome. So we were talking about how she was unconscious. Tubman was returned to her owner's house and laid on the seat of a loom. A loom, it's probably a cotton loom for um, mo- not all, but a lot of slaves were on plantations that grew cotton, and then they turned that cotton into clothing. So a loom was a machine that would take the cotton and make it... Um, suitable for for clothing 
just got a just got a message that's not important samra's here what's going on i think samra might make an appearance tomorrow i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything but if you watch the money episode samra might be on live to ask a question yeah um anya that's a great point um unconscious passed out exactly phrasal verb it means the same thing or in a coma so if somebody is unconscious for a long period of time we might say they're in a coma so a coma is more serious it lasts longer than being passed out but both are unconscious yeah i love doing these live lessons because people can ask questions that's if and i know there are some teachers in here but the teacher is only as good as the students, you know, let them be like, it's always great to get questions from people who are learning because I might not explain it well. And sometimes students have so much to offer. So thank you, Anya. All right, good. Samra says she will be there. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, some questions about money. So Samra has a question she's going to come on live that's hey talk about coming on live in a language that is not your native language now, i've spoken to samra before um on camera before so she's she's very good she's very good oh <clears throat> i have to yeah i should go too i don't want to make this too long so we'll just finish this up but cecilia thanks for stopping by hope you have a great class now when you say you have a class in 20 minutes I think that's Cecilia, who is the teacher of the class. So she's going to be teaching some students. And Cecilia is also an English teacher. I think that's it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anytime, Cecilia. It's fun. It's fun stuff. I like doing it. All right, Cecilia. Enjoy your class. Hopefully you have some awesome students. So let's see. Let me share here again. The last thing we read was Loom loom i mean this is how slaves were treated so she obviously had a pretty severe head injury she had no medical care for two days she was sent back into the fields with blood and sweat rolling down my face until i couldn't see and we call those quotation marks so that little piece that i just read are her actual words this is what she told somebody her boss returned her to Broadrus. I'm not sure, but they never mentioned who Broadrus was. Maybe it's earlier up in here. Maybe it's a doctor or an overseer. Uh, it seems like it may, actually maybe her owner here who tried unsuccessfully to sell her. She began having seizures and seemed to fall unconscious. She later said she was aware of her surroundings while appearing to be asleep. Now that exactly sounds like unconscious to me. These episodes were alarming to her family. They couldn't wake her when she fell asleep suddenly and without warning. The condition remained with Tubman for the rest of her life. Larson suggests she may have suffered from... Ooh, big word here. Big term. And I cannot highlight it. Temporal lobe epilepsy. I'll say that a couple times. Temporal lobe epilepsy because of her injury. So a lobe, uh, my, my, actually, my lobes are actually covered right now, but uh, you can't even see it, but ear lobe. If you're not familiar with that, um, there is a part of the brain you probably will never need to know it. Like it's called the temporal lobe and epilepsy. I think I explained, did I explain that earlier? I can explain it now, but ear lobe, the ear lobe, that's the part that dangles from your ear that a lot of people will, will when they get their ear pierced and wear earrings, that's, that's where they pierce at the bottom. Got these headphones on, but it's, it's, it's right there. That's the ear lobe. That's the ear lobe. So temporal lobe, part of the brain, a lobe is usually something on the side lobe. 
and uh, epilepsy. That is when what we say in English, when people have seizures, I mentioned seizures before. Um, it's, it's not always the whole body that shakes. Sometimes it's just maybe the eyelids, but it's when your brain is put under stress and um, damage is being done to the brain every time someone has a seizure, unfortunately. Temporal lobe under your earplugs. Yeah, yeah. So if you have earplugs in, some people might use earplugs when they when they go to sleep, but your your temporal lobe is below your your uh, earplugs. Yeah, very nice. All right, that's gonna do it for now. I want to try to keep it short. This is a half an hour, still long enough, but I hope it's going to help you with your English, with American history. I will leave a link to the page in the description box. If you want to try reading this on your own, you can always rewatch this uh, lesson. Have me read along with it. Hopefully it'll help you with your English. And if you're studying for the U S citizenship test could really help you. Thank you everyone for showing up. Thank you everyone who's watching on replay. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you might want to do that. I'll see you next time.